Chapter 12 of the original autobiographical novel Ten Years of Marriage by Su King, a female writer in the Republic of China. Lu Sichen is finally here on the next morning Ji heard knocking on the door in my sleepy thought it was Zhao Ningbo who was coming in to clean up the room. Without thinking Mira wore pajamas and pants and opened the door. Lu Sichen seemed shocked and proud of herself he don't think it's good to come in. It's not good if you don't come in he feel embarrassed too he quickly picked up a Qian Sam and ran to the bathroom. I mean to wait until I finish changing my clothes before I come out to talk. Lu Sichen then said, it's still early. You can sleep a little laundry I'm really in a trance too he hesitated a little and got into bed again. He was sitting alone on the sofa smoking after a while. He suddenly asked Tan Waiming if he had been here yesterday. I suddenly panicked after a while. I had no choice but to nod to him. On the other hand, I asked you how you knew. He smiled unnaturally and said, we have been here too. Pan Zimai and I wanted you to go out for a drink yesterday. But when I arrived at the entrance of the lane, I saw Tan Waiming rushing into the lane in a car. We guess he must be here to find you. So we went elsewhere. It turns out that they are only one step apart. But I was deceived for no reason and Waiming should never have taken this step, first. Otherwise, even if he comes in Lu Sichen is already drinking when I see him, I will naturally become indifferent to him. He left happily like it was the first time and nothing will happen right? Lu Sichen shouldn't have backed away when he came in. They should have come in to help me out. Do he and Pan Zimai still think that I like Tan Waiming somewhat? I never imagined that it is so difficult to fully understand each other. He didn't say anything to you right? Lu? Sichen asked with a deliberate smile. I replied sullenly. No, nothing he began to pace around the room for a while walk to my bed seems like he wants to say something but never said a word smokes wild the cigarette butts were thrown randomly on the ground, one after another. You don't need to step on it with the soles of your feet. I said, why do you love smoking so much? He didn't and swear he finished smoking another cigarette in a moment then he whispered to me have you ever seen the movie? A person always likes to smoke when he is thinking deeply. So I used a close-up shot ashtray is full of long and short paper cigarette butts. So what are you thinking about? There is nothing he gradually approached the small coffee table beside the bed. Flicking with the green cover of the desk lamp does this lampshade look good? I deliberately digressed and Sage shook his head and said nothing to Wyming complained a lot last night. My words went elsewhere I go you know wonder he he said unentrusted has been forced to do so recently me life is all supported by Jin Shiking hat are these words Stan Wyming has nothing to do recent living expenses are all provided by Prime Minister Kim. I believe Lu Sichen will not spread rumors however. How averted Tan Wyming also scold Prime Minister Kim last night? Ungrateful. Shameless we despise him even more I want to put on my clothes and get up. But Lu Sichen is Hirim embarrassed to come down with my bare legs to get clothes to wear. He didn't seem to think about this his mind is very disturbitous he restless. But I have nothing to do with him he may have only one thought just a thought. He thought he was a guilty god poor gentleman waking went but saying he doesn't leave smoked another cigarette of very own was silent the sound of leather shoe footsteps came outside but he stopped when he got to my door. Lu Sichen was so panicked that she was at a loss if someone has caught someone raping you he despise his cowardice in my heart in order to avoid comforting him with a voice like coaxing a child, it doesn't matter it was Zhao Ningbo who came in to clean up the room. But when I listen carefully but there were no sounds probably an unrelated passerby. He breathed a sigh of relief smiled and said that he was really frightened. I said, if someone comes in at this moment what will you do he smiled and said, it doesn't matter, little Ningbo. I said what? Don't you need to be a hypocrite when dealing with servants? He said no actually. I have nothing to do here. I just feel uneasy in my heart wealth and there was another awkward silentially then did he make up his mind to leave. While pondering to oneself it's all in silence when I opened the door, he turned around and said goodbye to me. When my concubine was about to reply to him, suddenly I saw a smiling pans in my standing outside the door. It turned out that he had already arrived at the Dorivas dropping on our conversation let Ningbo as he re said playfully push Lu Sichen back in with one hand just close the door he said, why are you standing outside the door so sneaky and silent? He smiled and said, isn't that alright? I'm sorry to say I'm in a hurry. Hide your head under the quilt don't be shy Panzimai said we had a good time sleeping together in Nanjing we don't you sit up now and let's talk about it. I stuck my head out and asked what we were talking about. He said and got down to Businasi have a cousin who is the chief executive of Insidai is also your parent officer. 
He is now in Shanghai prepared to go back to Encheng this afternoon. Do you have anything you want him to bring to the old lady? I was silent thinking about the current traffic difficulty as he fled back home the year the war started. After coming out Aglini have never been to my hometown Aglini don't know how my mother is getting old now. He's afraid he won't live long anymore. I have to go back and take a look. She brought some money and we don't mention any unpleasant words Agan let's also take a trip to Ansidiak Lusich and suddenly Said Panzimai smiled and said it was too early to be the new son-in-law. When you come inside the newspaper office, you have to work harder. I can't help but win this body. Where can we have a threesome forever? I told him that I wanted to go back with Commander Pan. I don't know if it's okay. He replied. What's wrong with that? If you are determined to go I'll go for you it's agreed that I'll accompany you to find your cousin in the afternoon. So it was inconvenient for Lu Sichen to stay any longer. The two of them hurriedly said goodbye and left. In the afternoon as expected, Pan Zimai came to my house you've already packed up my gear Pan Zimai said you don't have any luggage? I said get on the boat and get off the boat checking in passengers is so crowded he think it's better not to bring it. He also thinks so but no one is taking care of my room. A question suddenly occurred to me. Can Zhao Ningbo be trusted? Nothing Pan Zimai calmly accepts I let him keep the door locked he'll come and explain it to you every day see if everything is still finneath problem is Salvati went with him to see Commander Pan Chief Pan has an office in Shanghai. We went up and knocked on the door. The servant didn't open the door inside, he shouted and asked which Onit was easy to hear clearly that it was Pan Zimai's voice. Then the door opened bow and let us in Chief Pan hasn't come yet. There are a few businessman looking people already waiting there. I'm looking at this place just like a business organization. The servant brought two cups of team board asked Pan Zimai about this in a low voice Pan Zimai smiled but didn't answer after a while. Chief Pan came. He is a sweet skinned, strong, tall, military type man. Compare with Pan Zimai's beautiful scholar appearance how do they look like brothers? But his attitude towards Pan Zimai was very kind. That's not perfunctory but it contains quite a respectable element they probably thought that the life of literati was pitiful. But he is a kind of person with considerable knowledge right? That was his observation error. Although Pan Zimai's family background is ordinary however, the ambition is quite arrogant they has stubborn self-confidence I am confident that there will be a day when I can feel proud and proud in the future. He is courteous to others it's his way of keeping a distance from Othur so that people won't be able to mature through into Messiah then narrow you down in Shanghai, Nottingham University don't know how many acquaintances he has however, I can have a deep and informal conversation with him. I'm afraid it's just me and Lu Sai Kunt that day after he exchanged a few words with Chief Pan, just introduce me to him. He was unusually polite to Mime so sensitive that I can't help but think of it Pan Zimai may have said to him something like I know Prime Minister Kim or Mrs. Ki otherwise. Why would he be so polite? Car at the door Chief Pan politely asked me to move on. He himself follows closely behind walk down the stairs together Pan Zimai wanted to deliver it to the dock but Chief Pan insisted that he didn't want Toth Pier is crowded he will definitely greet me well tell Pan Zimai to rest assured Pan Zimai could only watch our car drive away. This is a big foggy shiny car Chief Pan and I are sitting together. In addition to the driver, there was also a bodyguard sitting in front. It seems that the entourage has already taken the next round. There is no one else. At this moment Chief Pan smiled and asked me how many years it would take me not to visit my hometown. I also answered casually I saw that he had a white silk scarf wrapped around his coat collar. The national dress looks quite wide and mighty when worn on the body asked Chief Pan if he was in the Yunxian Night Security Company. He smiled and said yes do you think I look like Cuba? In fact, I am not a military academy was born in physical education. A rambunctious athlete those who study physical education also become officials God knows when the car arrives at the pier several Japanese military policemen came up to question me. Chief Pan helped me out of the car. A junior officer from the gendarmerie with me stuttered some words in Japanese. Boeing is a deep 90 degree C started to despise him naturally. This may be because of my bad psychological effects. They are the people of the victorious country all thou also pay attention to Polidnesh however. Despite being polite, he still retains his arrogant attitude. And our view is to hold our shoulders and explain our laughter say they underestimate the enemy don't advise them either. The fear is really too much. It was so easy for them to let us go without inspection. Commander Pan's entourage is waiting at the dock. At this moment, everyone bows respectfully to Commander Pan. 
passed by Chief Panna even willing to look at them. They saluted my smiled and nodded to them one by one. In fact, I no longer recognize their names. Chief Pan's luggage will be sent up first. There are 20 or 30 Pichessi don't know if it's official business or private goods. I feel strange is he going to marry a girl in N-City? Look at everything in the 15th day of the dragon. Subduing it's a bit like dressing up as a dowry. Later I found out that he also worked as a member of the Dayton gang. Commander Pan still asked me to go up first. He follows me and his large entourage followed him we were seated in the dining room while bunks horizontally and vertical ibding, blankets, etc. are specially cleaned after Chief Pan sat down, let's say hello to the tea house and others first. Then the guard scolded them and left these servants I brought brought me milk, cakes, biscuits, fruits, etc. Commander Pan asked me to eat more I took a sip or two of milky really don't want to drink then he got up and stood at the window to be seedy saw many armed Chinese soldiers on the dock trying to get on the ship. I saw a few Japanese military policemen again. Block the last there are more and more Japanese military policy there seems to be a dispute between the two parties however. Martial law was declared at the dock. Some passengers fled in all directions. Some were eager to squeeze onto the ship first. Military police hit and beat people with wooden sticks. It was hell on earth. Officer Pan saw that the situation was getting serious. He hurriedly asked the guards to close the windows and draw the curtains. After a while, he asked the guards to stand outside the door and draw them for us. There were only him and I in the room. The curtains were tightly drawn. It was dark. I opened a corner of the curtain and looked out, half out of boredom and half out of curiosity. Officer Pan hurriedly stopped me and said, don't move, be careful of grenades coming in. I laughed and said that he hadn't fired yet. He saw that I was still facing the window. He had to lie down quickly and lie straight on the felt blanket. I looked at him and found it funny. I asked Officer Pan, you are the commander of the security. Are you so timid? He answered vaguely behind my back, I am still a major general. But the Japanese military police were really not easy to mess with he don't know what's wrong with those trouble makers spavink the Japanese. Damn it I felt really uncomfortable listening to that. After a while he poked his head out again ask me if I'm still quitting Smokinji said yes quickly covered his face and lay down again Somio knocked on the door outside Keith Pan listened attentively. But he couldn't make sense after a long while, he had to reluctantly uncover the felt backs at you pass who it was a hoarse voice outside replied that it was Mekif Pan then understood it must be staff officer Han, please come in guard open the door short and fat soldier walked in chief Pan introduced you staff officer Han said Miss Suve seen her before in Key's mansion. It turned out that he was Mr. Key's cadre staff officer under Commander Zhang that day, Commander Zhang took him to Key's Mansioni ran into him it seemed familiar everyone talked about things outside Agan according to staff officer Han, the planner said this. They were the soldiers under Commander Zhang. They wanted to send Chief of Staff Cheng to Incheng for inspection. So they had a conflict with the soldiers from Dongyang County. It has probably been resolved now. Chief of Staff Han was in a rage. He said, what a bastard. Chief Pan also cursed the group of soldiers who had caused trouble. I couldn't help but open the curtains and look out. Sure enough, I saw that the Chinese soldiers were driven back by the trucks. The Japanese military police stood majestically. Their bayonets were shining. I just wanted to cry when I saw them. Chief Pan was led by Chief of Staff Han to visit Chief of Staff Cheng. I sat on the bed and ate. Their guards kept bringing me food. It was probably something he had taken care of when he went out. He still hadn't come back after the boat sailed. He and Chief of Staff Cheng probably had a good conversation. At dinner, he asked the tea house to come in and invite me to the dining room. I said I didn't want to eat. After a while, he came to invite me again. I had no choice but to accept the invitation. A scene. He introduced me as the Chief of Staff. He was also a typical macho. At night, I lay on the bed with my clothes on. He took off his coat, and only wore a woolen sweater and pants. His physique was so strong and amazing. I remembered his panic in the afternoon. I couldn't help but feel strange. The lights were on all night. The waves in the sea were getting bigger. The hull was shaking a little, but we couldn't sleep. We just talked about nothing important. He told me that he was the only son in the family. His grandfather dotted on him. He also loved his grandfather. Unfortunately, his grandfather passed away this winter. He asked someone to print a book for him. 
There were portraits and calligraphy and inscriptions by many literati. The first chapter was written by Premier Jin for him. He pointed it out to me. I had to smile and nod. We talked about other things. Grandpa worshipped Zhang Wenzeng. He said it reminded me of during the day. He brought the incense dragon with him as his dowry. What would Zhang Wenzeng do? I couldn't help but laugh. The next morning, the ship docked. There was endless harassment. Passengers carried baskets to the shore. I saw many military police rushing to maintain order. First, they asked everyone in the cabin to get under the cabin and not move. Other cabin passengers had to stand by and didn't have to rush. Commander Pan. And I had breakfast at Chibi. He wore a top hat and a black coat. Many people walked out of the cabin proudly. I couldn't help but fall behind. When we reached the stairwell, he looked back and asked, Where is Miss Sue? I walked up and said, Are we going ashore now? He nodded and said, Yes. Then the military police strictly maintained order again. They asked everyone to step back and make way. A man who looked like an adjutant, pointed at his throat and shouted, Please let our commander come down first. There was also Chief of Staff Cheng. Commander Pan listened. He was not satisfied. He hurriedly stopped. Chief of Staff Cheng. It was the guest. Li. He went ashore first. Miss Su was there. Please go up first. But Chief of Staff Cheng refused to treat. As a result, Chief Pan went ashore first. I resigned. Chief of Staff Cheng and Staff Officer Han went ashore one after another. When we got ashore, there was a shiny chartered car waiting. Chief Pan asked me to get in. I said no, I would hire a car to go to my relatives in the city. He was not willing to agree. Later, it was decided that he would take the chartered car himself. He hired another clean car for me. Military music was played on the shore. It was not just one of the welcoming ceremonies. It looked a bit like a wedding. I couldn't help laughing when I saw it. We went to Chief Pan's mansion first. His wife looked like a country girl. She was quite honest. Chief Pan asked him what snacks he had at the moment. His wife replied in fear and trepidation that she heard that there was a fresh yellow croaker sent by someone in the kitchen. Either we could make let's eat some yellow croaker. Pan said angrily, how can you treat such a dish to a distinguished guest? He said, you are a country bumpkin. He really didn't know how to talk. His wife blushed. I explained that yellow croaker was delicious. I haven't eaten hometown food for a long time. I won't be polite. I really want to try it. Pan returned to his seat and asked his wife to ask the kitchen to cook it. His wife stayed at home and leaned against the door frame and shouted to the maid, Master, please ask Miss Sue to eat yellow croaker. Please ask the kitchen to cook it. Unexpectedly, the maid didn't run a few steps and said, Master, please ask Miss Sue to eat yellow croaker. Please ask the kitchen to cook it. I couldn't help laughing when I heard it. Pan smiled embarrassedly. After eating snacks, I said I was going back to my hometown to see my mother. Pan asked me to go after lunch. I was eager to go home, so I declined again and again. He felt it was inconvenient to keep me, so I said that we should invite the old lady to come and have a simple meal the day after tomorrow. I said that the steamed buns were a vegetarian feast. It was very inconvenient, thank you. He quickly said that it was okay. There was a pagoda temple in the western suburbs. It was very quiet. I would invite Miss Sue to come and burn incense for the old lady the day after tomorrow. They would also eat vegetarian food. It was inconvenient for me, so I had to agree vaguely. He also ordered his adjutant Gu Chuan to accompany me to the countryside. I remembered that there were many bandits and miscellaneous troops in the countryside. It would be inconvenient to show off, because he said that servants like to be indifferent. If someone accompanies me, I am afraid that my humble home will not provide good hospitality. It will make the servants feel uneasy. Fortunately, I don't have much luggage. Let me go to the countryside alone. He persuaded me again and again. Seeing that, I was unwilling to agree. He had to go inside to get an invitation to dinner the day after tomorrow. He also wrote me a pass. He said that Su Huiking was at home to protect Union when passing the blockade. I had to thank him and left. All right. This part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.